Hi, Kieran Stone here for Project Rawcast. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use frequency separation to sharpen or even desharpen an image in Photoshop. Now, frequency separation is more often than not used in portrait work as it allows you to separate the colors and tones of your image from the details. Very handy if you're wanting to retouch skin, maintaining the skin's texture while getting rid of any blemishes or imperfections uh, so you don't soften or blur the image too much. We're going to use it to add contrast to our details, which in turn should sharpen our image. We can even use it to take contrast out of those details and maybe de-sharpen an image which has gone a bit too far. So the first thing we need to do is create a couple of different layers, which is going to be our colors and tones, and the other layer is going to be our details. So to do that, I'm just going to make a couple of copies of my background here by pressing Ctrl J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And if you're already working on an image and you've got other layers, you can use a stamp visible layer by using Control Alt Shift and E or Command Option Shift E and create two layers on top of whatever you're working on. So this first layer, I'm just going to call Blur. So that's going to be our colors and tones. And the second layer, I'm going to call Details. Now I'll just turn off the details layer for the moment and have a look at our blur layer. And I'll just zoom in here so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and set the radius to whatever you normally do for sharpening in unsharp mask or high pass filters. So usually around two or three, depending on the megapixels of your image. For this tutorial, I'll just set it to three so you can see what's going on and click OK. Now I'm going to turn on my details layer and go to image and apply image. Now here you want to set these settings in particular which is your layer set to whatever your blur layer is, your blending mode to subtract and opacity 100, scale to offset 128. Now if you set your blending mode to subtract, it should come up with these settings by default, but if it doesn't, make sure they're set to this. And just click OK. So it's starting to look like a high pass filter already here. And for our details here, we need to change our blending mode from normal to linear light. Now hopefully if this has worked, if we turn off these layers and turn them back on, there's no change to the image. And that's because we've now got our whole image over two layers, our blur and details, rather than just in the one. So that's already looking like a, a sharpened layer just by itself. And with the blur, it just brings the image back to whatever it was. Now to create contrast in our details here, we're going to use a curves adjustment layer and clip it to the layer below. So use the clipping mask here. So now it's only going to affect the layer directly beneath it. And we need to set a point right in the middle and set it to 128 for input and 128 for output. So that's going to be our mid gray here. So there's going to be no change in the actual brightness of the image. So that was too high, it's going to be overly bright. If it's too low, it's going to be dark. So we want 128 and 128. And now if we add contrast to the image by bringing up our highlights and bringing down our shadows, you can see that it's sharpened the image. So we turn that off and on. You can see the change there. Now if you look really closely here, you can see that in any case where you've over sharpened an image, you tend to get this fringing around the edges where you've got one side that's too light and another side that's too dark. Now, this is very prominent on the light side. It's usually what you tend to notice first. So with this technique, you can actually set that light side to have no or very little change and just darken the shadows side of the contrast. So we turn that on and off. You can see that it's added sharpening to the image without getting that fringing around the edge. Now you can come back and just add a little bit more if you want to, just to make that sharpening a little bit more prominent, but you've got a huge amount of control over 
how far that sharpening goes on both your light and your darker side. So let's just zoom out a bit here and I'll just group these together so I can turn it on and off. So there's only a very subtle change to the sharpening there, but you can always come back and change it however you want. You can adjust it just right for whatever image you're working on. So that's how you can sharpen your image with frequency separation. So let's have a look at an image here, which is probably a little bit too sharp. So I'll just zoom in a little bit more here. So you can see here, I've used an unsharp mask here at a radius of three pixels, just so you can see what's going on. And I'm starting to get fringing around my edges here, which can look a bit over sharpened and a bit too uh, crunchy. So if you've got an image that's flattened and saved and you've got an over sharp image, you might want to try and bring back some of that sharpening, but you don't just want to blur the image. So you can use frequency separation to take away some of that contrast while still maintaining all your details. So the same thing we did before we're going to do here, which is create a couple of different layers, uh, control alt shift and E or command option shift E on a Mac a couple of times create two new layers here and then change the first one to blur my second one to details now for the radius that you want to set on your blur you do need to zoom in and just have a look at how many pixels that fringing is taking well over how many pixels that fringing takes place in this case I know it was set to three but here it's looking like about two or three so what you want to do is blur your layer, the radius of however many pixels that is. So in some cases it may just be one, or other cases it might even be uh, three or four. In this case, I'm gonna set my blur to a radius of three. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, set it to three pixels. So that's blurred out all that detail. Now in my details, image, apply image. And again, I need to change this from merged to blur. These settings here, scale two, offset 128, opacity 100 and subtract as a blending. Click okay. Select a curves adjustment layer. Oh, and got to go to my details, change that from normal to linear light. And again, no change in the image, which means we've done our settings right. Go to my curves layer, add a clipping mask, so it's only affecting my details. Again, make sure this is 128 and 128. And now I should be able to drag down my highlights so I can start to take out that fringing there. I can keep my shadows where they are if I want to, and that way so removing that sharpening from the image. So if I have a look at my original unsharpened image, it still looks a bit soft there, but here, still maintaining some sharpening, but I'm able to get rid of that fringing from the edge. And if I wanted to, I can go on to do further sharpening from there. But if I just group these together, Turn it on and off. I've desharpened the image while maintaining all the detail. And it can take a bit of playing around just to get it right. You don't want to go too far and end up reversing the effect. You don't want to add any more sharpening. Just want to take it out so the fringing is not as prominent and you can still keep some of the sharpening there. So that's a way you can use frequency separation to desharpen an image, or at least get rid of some of the fringing that is a sure sign of over sharpening. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to go to projectrawcast.com and have a listen to our latest episode of the podcast, and also check out our blog for great tips and ideas for photography. Until then, I'll see you next time.